In this video, we're building a pedal board of doom. What's going on? Welcome to Beholden to the Riff, the heaviest bass channel on YouTube. My name is Jared, and thank you so much for checking out this video. I don't know what happened, but I woke up a few weeks ago and noticed my pedal collection was unruly and it's time to, to rein it in and get it all nice and organized and set up on a pedal board. So if you can relate, this is the video for you and be sure to stick around to the end. I'll give a few kind of bonus tips and advanced kind of tricks when you're putting together a board. With this pedal board build, I'm hoping to accomplish two main objectives. First, nice, clean, organized board that I can use here at home for recording any of the bass lessons and gear demos that I do for the channel. Second thing is I'd like it to be portable so I can just, you know, take it to band practice, take it out to gigs when we start playing out again and not having to lug this, you know, additional piece of gear <laughs> breaking my back. So with that in mind, let's get to it. So if you're looking to build a board, you need a few key things. First, you need a board. This one is a pedal train, 22 by 18 inches. Could have gone a little bit bigger, but like I said before, I want this thing to be portable and this leaves plenty of room for everything I need and then some. Second thing we're going to need is a power supply. I went with the one spot C12. This thing has way more firepower than what I'm going to need for this build in particular, but I wanted to kind of plan ahead and make sure that I had some uh, variance on the amperage. Some pedals take a little more juice or require a little more power than others. Um, I have a Strymon pedal that I'm going to throw on here. Those typically like a little more amperage than other pedals, so I'm just planning ahead playing it on the safe side with this. Next thing you're gonna need, some zip ties. Can't have too many of these. These will help you keep your cables all organized, nice and neat. Next thing, Velcro. Gonna throw a layer of Velcro on the board itself and then throw some on the back of the pedals. So when you place them on there, they don't go anywhere. And really nice for the, you know, when I'm lugging it all over town so that they stay in the same place and I don't need to reassemble the, the board again. Last thing, you're going to need a bunch of patch cables to connect all the pedals together. And the my power supply came with it, but sometimes you need extra cables to get the juice <laughs> to the pedals. And yeah, other than that, we just need our pedals. So let's get after it. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to mount this power supply. This one came with some mounting brackets that I'm going to screw into the pedal board itself and I'm going to house this thing underneath so it's tucked away and leaves more room on top for them pedals. One thing you want to keep in mind is we need access to this outlet. So I'm going to line it up so it sticks through this slot here so I can get that cord in there. So let's do it. Now that we got the power supply mounted, we're moving on. Step number two, laying down the Velcro. So I'm gonna lay it down across each one of the bars and then just kind of put them on all the pedals all at once. So we're all set, ready to roll. Let's go. Taste. 
So now that we got all the Velcro laid down on the board and attached to all the pedals we'll be using, let's get to the fun part, laying down some pedals. First up, everyone's favorite, the tuner. This is a boss, very road-worn boss, chromatic tuner, the TU2. I'll be using it as, I'll be using the bypass out so I can just keep it on all the time. These things are handy for a mute button so you can just kill your signal. I have a mute on my foot switch for my dark glass amp. So I use that, which allows me to leave this one on. So this one's going up top. So in a place where I don't need to access it as much top right corner. So the second pedal we're laying down is the Strymon pedal that I referred to earlier. It's the Strymon Compadre compressor. I just picked this one up with the board. Super excited to try it out. Um, this one has a boost, uh, which you can use as a clean boost, and you can put a little dirt on there. It's got a switch for that as well. I switch between fingers and pick, so a compressor is a must. It really just kind of evens the playing field. So I'm not constantly turning the volume down when I go to a pick and vice versa. So let's lay this one down. Second, I'm gonna put it in the bottom right corner because I want access to this boost. I have a feeling I'll be using this one quite a bit. So now that we got our compressor down, let's start laying the foundation of doom and put some distortion, overdrive, and fuzz pedals on the board. First pedal I'm gonna put down is the Fuzz Lord Drone Master. I absolutely love this pedal and I actually never turn it off. I just put a touch of gain on, crank the level all the way up and just leave it on and it's kind of just like a more like a tone shaping pedal. It just warms everything up and sounds awesome. So this is going down first. So when arranging the pedals on the board, I like to put the lower gain stuff first and then proceed to the higher gain stuff further down the signal. It just seems to work a little bit better for gain stacking to my ear. I don't know. You try it, try it out. There are no rules. So first pedal I'm going to put down is the Obsidian by Foul Sounds. This thing is awesome. It sounds like a like a orange amp just cranked. Um, I used it in the Caius Gardenia lesson. Sounds killer. So this is going down next. Next pedal is going to be the Backstabber by Foul Sounds. This has serious amounts of fuzz. It also has a blend knob. So I like to use this one as kind of like a nice layer, thick layer of dirt, but still have a good amount of clean signal coming through. Sounds awesome. So this one's going down next. All right, after the backstabber, we are going with another Fuzz Lord pedal. This is the MF2, a big muff on steroids, crazy amounts of fuzz. I like to use this one in special occasions and it just, really stands out, beefs everything up. Killer pedal. Next up, I'm gonna put down the foot switch to the Dark Glass M500 amp head, which rules. I use this as the mute and love the distortion channels on here. So this was going down, easy access right here. So now that we got all the dirt laid down on the pedal board, I'm gonna start adding some modulation effects. First up, classic boss delay DD5. Going down here. Next up, I'm gonna put down an EQ pedal. This I've been using less and less, uh, especially since getting the, uh, the Drone Master. That seems to just EQ everything just perfect. But this I've been using as a boost. But now that this Strymon has the boost on here, I think I'm going to 
be using this a lot more, but I don't feel right without an EQ on there, so it's going down. So I'm gonna put down one more pedal, leave a little room for reconfiguration and more pedals. Uh, last pedal I'm gonna put down is the Looper. I use this in all the gear demos and almost on a daily basis. Easy access right down here. So all in all, I'm liking the looks of the board. Nice organized, clean, easy access to what I need to get to. Little room for experimentation. So let's get the patch cables in and let's get them connected to the power supply. All right, so patch cables have connected all the pedals. All the pedals are getting power. Hopefully, we'll see in a sec. And everything's kind of nice and tidy underneath. Well, at least as tidy as I could get it. Zip tied up nice and snug, so no, no loose wires or anything. Uh, yeah, let's plug it in. Let's see if it works.
All right, so it's all working. Sounds cool. All the gain stacks really well, and I can't wait to bring this to band practice and get loud with this thing and see how it works. Probably gonna need to make some more configurations. And just after I got done recording that, this bad boy came in, the rad sickness from Electro Foods. So I'm gonna need to find a place for this one on here and get a demo going on this one too. So as mentioned at the top of the video, I do have some kind of advanced tips for you. The first one is get some electronic screener. Um, this one isn't, but if you can find one that is a contact cleaner, those work great. Um, what you can do is use them to spray. Here I have one that I didn't put on. You can spray out the connectors where your, you know, the input jack goes in. This can get full of grime, full of dust and dirt. And, uh, you know, I don't, you can open them up and give them a touch, but um, you stay, if you want to keep it safe, you can just do the, the, the contact and the input jacks here. Um, really goes a long way, keeps it from getting noisy and kind of crackly, really killer. So tip number two is to label your power supply. You can use like a piece of masking tape and just put it on the back and write down where each of the connectors are going to. This can save you a lot of time, a lot of headache, especially if something starts not working, you can fix it on the fly much quicker. All right, so tip number three is to get yourself a reading light. Take this thing, clip it on your pedal board, and you have some light for if you're playing at a show and it's dark, or if your band practices, you know, in the dark, or create the vibe. This gives you a little bit of light when you need it, uh, so you can check to see if all the connections are happening and if all your settings are correct before playing. Thank you so much for checking out the video. Really hope it helped you out. Huge thank you to all the Patreon members. And if you haven't already, like and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.